Never lose sight of the end goal of a project by being caught up in the detail. As you can see here by this power box, I didn't even model the 3D cable. Why? Because it's just not going to be visible from the camera or it's visible and it'll be perceived to be 3D. But the camera is far enough away for it to be believable regardless. Same with this door. It's very simple, basic 3D. Your camera angle and, and viewing distance should always, always dictate the amount of work that you put into an object. Now this obviously differs for product modeling because that's always close up views. But environments like this, your camera is going to be far back and you should use that to your advantage. This is one of the best tips that I received as a young 3D artist. Only model what you can see when it comes to bigger environments and stuff like that. The image and the angle, I pretty much decided on that angle and view and I modeled according to that. It's no point me spending hundreds of hours, well not hundreds of hours, but a lot of time into something that doesn't gonna, it won't be in the camera view, so I'm not spending time on it. Three D doesn't actually have to make three dimensional sense or physical sense all of the time. At the electrical cables on the left on the render, as well as the bunting on the left, they make visual sense and your brain perceive them as correct. But in actual fact, in real three D, those cables are they're literally going nowhere. They look good in a scene. But the fact is, in reality, that's most probably not the way that they're going to be laid out. They'll probably run to another power box or come off a cable or a central point or central pole and run to the left and right. So not everything that you do has to make real life sense. It has to be perceived to make sense. There's a big difference. This is also one of the bigger tips that I received as a young artist. Know what you're unwrapping for. If you're unwrapping for a game, there's a very meticulous way that you're unwrapping for. But when you're unwrapping for something like this, which is basically a passion project, then there's no reason for you not to be quick and dirty about it. What I did here is I literally projected from view onto a map and then tiled over the edges of that map. There's no reason not to take shortcuts when you're doing concept art that won't be used in games. One of the quickest way, ways to very quickly put a scene together is by using Blender's images as planes. You get some fantastic free photographs on sites like Pixels as well, well as Unsplashed um, and you get Blender's images from planes tool which is a fantastic tool which basically allows you to just put loop and ring cuts into an image um, just make sure that your correct uvs are enabled so that the image doesn't distort when you slide or move an edge but allows you to turn a photo very quickly into a photorealistic piece of 3d content Focus on one element at a time. It's much more productive if you criticize your own work and you focus on one element at a time, hide the other layers, get the other objects out of a render, look at one object, what is wrong with this one object, what do I want to improve on this one object. You're going to find you'll speed up your production and workflow a lot by focus, focusing on one object at a time. One of the things I've learned to do is to keep all my image references online and this is very important because I used to drop references like hot potatoes. I keep or kept them on flash drives and other places and I would invariably just lose them. Trello is a great app. You can make boards, you can make projects for them, you can put in reference cards for each project and pretty much keep all your references accessible from any computer. Identifying repetition in your scenes is very important. This is the reference I used for my scene. It's an image from Ghost in the Shell. And you can see the reference I was looking at. You can obviously see that in the buildings as well. Now, 
repetition is probably one of the key or core elements in a lot of level design and a lot of large 3d layouts it's important that you recognize them this render on the left actually looks like it looks like a lot of work but if you look at the repetition and tiling and repeat elements it actually is a very basic environment that was put very or put together very quickly why because there's a lot of repeat elements In your final render don't be afraid to use contrast between light and dark most renders that i see are too evenly lit and images come alive when there's a lot of contrast between the light areas and the dark areas it's shadows that gives shape to environments don't be afraid to use contrast